Okay, I was keeping my expectations fairly low about this new iPhone 13 until this bit of news came out yesterday. According to Mark Gurman and Bloomberg, Apple are ready to bring portrait mode video and higher quality recording, also known as ProRes. I also asked you in my community what features you're most excited about and the 120Hz display actually seems to be the most popular choice for you. So let's talk about these features then and why they change things for me and see if they change things for you as well. Oh, and I'm not gonna shy away from the privacy questions. A lot of you asked me in my previous video, so I'll make sure to cover that as well later in the video. Starting with this portrait style video, likely to be called cinematic or cinema mode, this type of footage is very popular on YouTube. I use a lot in my videos as well when showing close up of products, but up until now, you could only achieve this effect by using a DSLR camera when using a fairly wide aperture like f1.8, for example. You get this lovely shallow depth of field and that lovely soft background, which gives the video a bit more of a professional look. In my case, I use it a lot to hide my amateur video making skills. Whilst the results can be incredible, this is not something completely new. It's been around forever. So why am I so excited about this? It's because guys, doing this on a smartphone truly is a game changer for me. There are lots of leaks and rumors flying around. And as I said, I keep my expectations quite low typically, but this source is fairly accurate when it comes to Apple leaks. So I'm really hyped for this one. And apparently not only will you be able to achieve the effect, you'll be able to control it. So you can adjust the amount of bokeh. And what is bokeh? It's also known in the industry as tone based on a true story of a guy who added so much blur into his footage that he's been forever lost in it. But I'm an idiot when it comes to cameras, so rather than me trying to explain it, I brought someone who actually knows what they're talking about. Here's Casey from Camera Conspiracies. Tone is when you feel like being a douche and you only want one eye in focus. You bought a thousand dollar painting and nobody can even see it. You're a moron. It doesn't look right, nor does your face. Told you, the guy's an expert. His channel, way too funny and excellent camera reviews. For me, it's all I love about YouTube, information and fun. Go check him out. And Casey, you're an absolute legend, man. Thank you so much for doing this. There are some great creators here on YouTube like RJ and Patrick that achieved this style of footage with their equipment and they invested a lot in their gear and spent a lot of time mastering the skills. And you can tell guys, you know, so I'm looking forward to seeing how good the cinematic mode really is and whether or not it will compete with this sort of quality that we see here. I will leave a link to this guy's channels in the description, definitely worth a sub. I appreciate that an iPhone costs a lot brand new and sometimes it's worth waiting for the hype to die down. We all work really hard for our cash, so I'm always conscious of that and careful to recommend the latest and greatest. But this feature does mean a lot for people who enjoy capturing those special moments in life and especially if you're in the business of creating content professionally. And talking about professionals, what about the ProRes feature? First of all, what is it? It's a video codec developed by Apple themselves and widely used in cinema cameras. There are multiple flavors of it, but to keep it simple, it has support for any resolution up to 8K. Uh, whether we'll get 8K recording, it's hard to tell right now, but we should see at least 4K 30 frames per second, I'd say. The beauty of this codec is how well it works in video editing applications. So I might be jumping the gun here and oversimplifying, but Apple finally giving us some pro editing software on something other than Mac OS? Hmm, if only they had an app that did that. Okay, let's not get into the Final Cut Pro discussion here. I'm sure that we can leave that speculation for another day, but if that's not coming, the fact that we are getting ProRes on the mobile as an output at least means greater control for video editing, even if that's done in post-processing on, on your MacBook or, or a PC. Before we talk about the next big feature coming to the iPhone 13, I just wanna say a massive thank you for every single one of you who subscribed to the channel. As a small creator, seeing the response I got in the last video is a great feeling, but that only happens because some of you, actually a lot of you, engaged with me in the comment section, shared my content with others, and this really helps, guys. So thank you so much for that. So if you're enjoying this video, do all the things. Hit the bell as well. Where is the bell? Hit the bell. And there's loads more coming. I already have iPhone 13 accessories lined up for review, so it's gonna be fun. Right, another feature that's coming to the iPhone 13 is AI-based photo filters. Basically, Instagram filters on steroids. This one doesn't really rock my boat, but I can see it becoming very popular too. With expensive cameras, you can shoot raw format, for example, which basically captures a lot more detail about the images, so you can apply your own style later in something like Photoshop or Adobe Lightroom. And we can already do that using third-party apps. So I am intrigued, not so much about the tech itself, but by the ability to really stylize our images 
and, and make them stand out. Of course, this doesn't replace photography skills like good composition and lighting, but it is another tool in your creativity belt. That I am excited about, excited to see what people will do with that tech, the potential to create our own signature filters and style, and maybe share that so others can create with it. I don't want to go off on a tangent here, but it does sound a lot like the focus it is on the camera improvements this year. We'll talk about the 120Hz display as well in just a moment. And I know a lot of you might be thinking, what is the point of all these great camera features if Apple can see all our images? What about the privacy issues, right? There were a lot of comments in my last video about this, so I thought I'd include my perspective in this video. Yes, Ron, like Apple, I see everything. In the comments section anyway. Right, so what do I think about this whole privacy malarkey? For those of you who haven't caught up with this yet, Apple announced last week that they are bringing new features to help with child safety. No one disagrees that this is a great thing to do, but a lot of people went up in arms for many reasons, but mainly because Apple has always been so strong in their privacy stance. And some people feel that Apple had previously not done enough, for example, to allow the authorities to access the bad guys' iPhones. Apple are saying now that they can scan for photos, but at the same time, maintain user privacy. And they're apparently going to do this by using a detection system called NeuroRash, not Rash, <laughs> NeuroHash. In simple terms, it will try to match your photos against a list of known images that the authorities already have in their databases. Of course, that this is what Apple are saying and we can all choose to believe them or not, right? Personally, I think, what took them so long? Everyone else has been doing this. And Apple say that the reason it took them so long is because they didn't have the technology, this encryption, neural hash technology to, to be able to do it without breaking that, that user privacy. But make no mistake, Eventually, if their system detects something that matches their criminal database, a human at Apple will be involved to review these images before they report to the authorities. So yeah, they're not gonna sit there and look at all our photos, but if a certain threshold is met, then yes, someone sitting at a desk in Palo Alto will look at it. There's a lot more detail on this and we can talk about this for a long time, but for me, I'm quite relaxed about this because I know the minute you sign up for an online service, you are taking a risk. 100% privacy seems to be an illusion for me. I'm not gonna sit here and defend Apple, but we are storing our entire lives in other people's computers, also known as the cloud. Dropbox, WhatsApp, Facebook, Google, Amazon. But there is one thing that personally doesn't sit well with me, which is you can turn it off. If you disable iCloud photos, this feature stops. Well, guess what the bad guys would do, right? And I know it's unrealistic. Apple probably can only have the technology in their massive data centers, and it would be too much to ask to have it locally. But for me, if you're gonna bring such a feature based on your on your principles and how much you want, you know, to make the world a better place, then make it either on or off. If the bad guys can turn it off then for me, it's a bit of a flawed system. Apple are also doing something called communication safety in messages, which will do a similar detection, but using a matching on the device itself. Again, all to protect children, which I think is great. And, you know, look, I don't have all the answers. I just think it's a reasonable cause, but being badly communicated to us, the consumers. I think the pragmatic approach is to rely on the data protection regulations that we have in place and take some responsibility ourselves and, you know, be careful with how much we share. And I'll raise my hand, I'm really bad at this and always click on the allow all or you know every time I access a website or click accept terms and conditions without reading but at the back of my mind I know I have enough security protecting the things that I care about like you know the web browsers themselves these days are providing lots more security features and I use one password for example to keep me protected and enable two-factor authentication on, on all the things that I care about. This is not a sponsored video by one password by the way but they are giving all of you a special discount so if you want to have a look at that I'll leave a link in the description. I did a separate video on them too, so we'll make sure to link that up here for you. Okay, 120 hertz display. You guys seem to be really excited about this one. In my last community poll, at the time of recording, we have about 700 votes and 120 hertz display is the feature that over 50% of you are really excited about. And boy, Apple better deliver on this. What I would say is, and listen, I don't wanna be the party pooper here, but it's not gonna be that impressive if you already have a recent iPad or used an Android device recently. Sure, it's better than the Super Retina XDR display that we have on the 12 Pro, but judging by my experience with the S21 Ultra, it's only really noticeable when the content supports it. It's gonna be an adaptive 120 hertz display, just like in this one, which means most of the time, it will probably still operate at 60 hertz. And the technology allows the display to be dimmed all the way down uh, to one hertz, which means they could bring always on display as well, which would be fantastic. But 
It's only when you play games or scroll through long pages or several images that you really see a less jittery experience. It's really hard to show this action here on YouTube without flickering, but to the naked eye, it just gives you a much more smoother experience. What I think is more important is not that Apple are finally bringing this to the iPhones, but what that will do to the industry. Uh, why do I think that? Well, a lot of mobile games out there still don't support 120 Hz display, even though the tech has been available on Android. Now, with Apple doing this, game developers will have no choice but to adopt that refresh rate. I like Android and I know that there's a lot of Android customers here on the channel, but it's the reality. Development of apps and games still very much prioritized uh, on iOS first. It's sad, but it's the reality. Okay, so what do I do now? Personally, I was leaning towards skipping this upgrade and maybe considering the Google Pixel 6 Pro, for example, or one of the Samsung devices. Is it the new display? Not for me. 120 Hz display on the iPhone is great too. And I think that feature will make the experience on the iPhone finally match what Android users have enjoyed for quite some time. And I covered this in a lot more detail on this video here for you. So make sure to check that out. It kind of blew up on my channel with nearly 100,000 views so far in just a week. So definitely check that out. But this advance in the camera features, the cinematic mode, the ProRes especially, is definitely what caught my attention and is making me rethink a little bit. I'll see you and your smiling faces on the next one. Bye. Nobody's like me. Phone ringing and I tell him it's I got wifey on blinking sheet. Freeze. Freeze.